on June 28, 2016, a PNSF aeromotor train designated as Q-CHISBD 6-27L departed Wellington, Kansas at 2.31 a.m. The train consisted of five engines leading and 54 loaded intermodal cars, none empty. The leader of this train was Dash 944CW5416, ES44DC7553, another ES44DC7909, ES44C4-8191, and another Dash 944CW5212. In the opposite direction was the BNSF Intermodal Train. This train consisted of three engines leading and 54 fully loaded intermodal cars. The train left Amarillo, Texas around 7.45 that morning with the final destination of Los Angeles, California. The leader of this train was Dash 944CW5162, ES44DC7838, ET44C4-3967, which was 8 months old at the time, and two DPUs, which were ES44C4-8234 and ET44C4-3970. In addition, this train was designated as S-LAC-LPC1-26K. At around 8.06 a.m., the dispatcher tried reaching out to the eastbound intermodal's crew. Since there's both intermodal trains, we'll just go by east and west. At 8.12 a.m., the dispatcher contacted the westbound crew about the eastbound crew with the situation that was going on in Panhandle. And also, the westbound crew acknowledged the radio communication. At around 8.17 a.m., the westbound crew was approaching a medium yellow signal at milepost 523.2. The eastbound crew approached a yellow over red aspect signal that was flashing at milepost 528.9. At around 8.20 a.m., the eastbound crew were traveling around 65 miles per hour. Five seconds later, the eastbound train passed the red signal at milepost 526.1. Because of this, it passed over a dual power switch that was intended for the westbound crew's movement. Suddenly, both crew members saw the headlights of each other's trains. They both throw their trains into emergency, and then, all of a sudden, the trains collided. Both trains collide head-on at a combined speed of 84 miles per hour, with the eastbound crew going 47 and the westbound crew going 37. In the chaos of the wreck, three people lost their lives. In a massive fire that started, that was from seen miles away, residents who were driving their cars were shocked to see this. But how can this cause such a bad of a head-on collision to happen? An investigation by the National Transportation Safety Board was soon launched. They found that the eastbound crew was not complying with the signal indicators. To add on to that, they also had to slow down, which was a big mistake by the engineer, which he could have probably been tired from working. And number two, from the conductor's mistake when he took his medications. If there was positive train control in the locomotives, this would have been prevented, but we can't always rely on technology to do the work for us. After the wreck, 5416, 7553, 5212, 5162, 7838, and 3967 were all deemed a total loss and scrapped. The other units were repaired and put back into service to continue their careers. It's been six years since this fire happened. Is this the end of it? Sadly, the answer is no. There have been wrecks in the past that happened like this. The Castleton train collision in 2013 in the 1989 Cajon Pass runaway where a fire started from a train derailing. Both of those collisions will still remain as deadly, especially the Panhandle train collision.